Okay, so welcome everybody and happy World Collage Day. It's so exciting. I'm glad you're all here. And um, I know some of you, some of you um, are new to me. I recognize a lot of the names and faces, but not everybody. So um, I'm in Waterford, Connecticut. I'm in my cozy little studio here and I'm a collage artist. And I've been working in the collage medium for a really long time. I can remember back to, um, actually, let me put myself in. Here we go. Uh, I can remember back to like junior high school when we used to uh, do collage on the back of clipboards or on uh, book covers and things. That was a really popular thing to do. So it's just kind of grown from there. And I remember taking a course in college too that was a, a big inspiration to get me um, continue on with that. And if you follow me on social media, you probably know that I do my uh, sketchbook collage every Monday morning so I'm always sharing one of these. I'm usually working in this new little um, journal that I made for myself and um, so later on I'll be talking about the class that actually was inspired by doing these little um, collages and um, so I just want to tell you about World Collage Day. Um, it started in 19 or excuse me 2018 and I just happened to see on Instagram that they were they put out a call to artists for uh, they wanted you to put together a cutout sheet and a cutout sheet is just a collaged sampling on paper of all the things that you like to use in your collage work. So I sent that in, you know, not expecting to ever hear anything back from them, but it turned out I was very lucky they 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 publish a magazine. And this was the special edition that they did for that year. And I actually got in. So here's my uh, cutout sheet. And then they did a little article on me. So there's it, myself and several other people. So if you're interested in reading this, this uh, is on my website. You can uh, take, a, take a look at that if you like. And um, so today what we're going to do is um, some speed collage. and. It's a great exercise. Um, I, I can't remember exactly who it was that I found out about it from, but it's a really long time ago. And I know since then I've seen quite a few artists um, talking about it and doing it because it's just such a great exercise. So you may have seen, I put some of these on social media. These are ones that I did in, uh, I think this was three minutes. And then, yeah, all of these were about three minutes, which is what we're going to do today. Uh, a lot of times I do, maybe if I work smaller, I might cut the time down a little bit to challenge myself. Or if I you know, work a little bit bigger, I, I would go as far up as maybe five minutes, depending on the size of them. Um, also, they're, they're not really meant to be finished works of art, but they can be because sometimes um, you'll work on them and you'll get it finished and, and you just really like it. So it's fine to, to do that. Sometimes they just end up being little backgrounds. Um, I used to also work on just pieces of paper, small um, cut out like a watercolor paper before I started working in my sketchbook. Um, so I ended up having, I mean, I've done hundreds of them, so I ended up having quite a few. So I've got a whole stack here that I actually glued to um, some other watercolor paper. And what I did was here was one that was four by four. And then with the scraps, I made this little one that kind of coordinates with it. And so all of these are going to be going into a book that I'm going to bind together. So if you like like yours enough. And also I'll be showing you later, I made little like little cutouts that you can put on there, which will help you kind of focus in on that, that one that you may have done. So uh, let's see. So hopefully you have your supplies ready. We're gonna have um, a glue stick, whatever kind of glue stick you have. Um, either your sketchbook, I'm gonna be finishing up a couple of them on here, or just a piece of paper and a pencil so that you can draw in your your little squares and I will um, I will do a, a short demo I won't go through the whole three minutes but I will kind of let you see what it is that um, you know in case you haven't done them before uh, I don't want you to feel intimidated because sometimes it's gonna be like oh three minutes is gonna go really fast but it can but I have to say it definitely gets easier 
the more you do and i know now a lot of times i'll i'll be finished i'll have filled in my section and i'll look and i'll still have maybe 20 maybe even 30 seconds left so you kind of just get used to working fast like that you trust yourself and it gets easier to do as you do them so if you haven't done it before it might feel a little awkward or a little uncomfortable but just push through and i, I think you're gonna be happy with it because it, it definitely gets easier and the reason for working fast is because when you are you know, if you have trouble making decisions, you're not quite sure what you want to do. Sometimes you're you're overthinking. So it kind of when you're working at this speed, it kind of takes you out of that um, overthinking critical mind and it helps your choices be a little bit more intuitive. So it really helps um, helps you work on your intuition, because when you're working fast, you're just grabbing those pieces. So you're not really thinking too much you're just going to whatever attracts you at that moment picking it up and and putting it down and i think as you do the more you'll get to see that wow you know i may not be thinking about it but i'm really putting things together that are making sense and i'm really liking this um, generally what i do is i like to work in um, different groups of colors how you can see uh, here i had kind of just an earth tone palette and then on these i was doing all blues so you may find it easier to do that I also did one just to show you that even if you have just book pages I did one this morning just with um, book pages and uh, let's see a couple other ones in here I did one that was well here's a little black and white one that I did with a little bit of pop of red which is always nice so you can do that too you can work with one color and add a little pop of color and I generally have, this is my box of papers for my uh, three to five minute collages that I do. And I do have them separated by colors. What I do is I'll take, I'll just take a folded piece of paper and then in here I've got all of my reds and all of my pinks. And um, I, when I decide which one I'm gonna work on, I'll kind of spread them out and show you um, in a little bit more detail what I have in there. Uh, let's see, and then I've got some orange and yellows and greens which i think that's what i'm gonna work with today so i'm gonna put those down there and then some of this is a huge pile i do work a lot with earth tone so that's a really big pile and uh and i've got a lot of all my blue so you can see how i kind of separate them so sometimes i will work strictly just from one of these little packs sometimes i will take maybe some of the blues and some of the oranges or maybe some purples and some yellows or purples and greens. So you can kind of combine what colors, uh, you know, might work well together, or you can just stick with that one, one palette. I think in the beginning, it's probably easier just to stick with kind of one color range. And um, I think it'll make things go to, together a little bit better. Right, so. so I think what we'll do is I'm going to show you. I'm going to turn my camera around so you can kind of see all of my papers here because I have quite a collection of different papers. All right, let's see here. Okay, so over here I've got a lot of my papers. So I've got some matte pieces and old artwork old artwork is great this is another piece of old artwork if something doesn't work out that you don't like just rip it up and it makes great great collage material we've got stamps and book parts book pages with paint on them um, some more painted papers these two here are um, Kleenex boxes. I just peeled them off of a Kleenex box. I, I don't know if you've noticed, but Kleenex boxes have some really beautiful graphics on them. This is from the Kleenex box as well. And then just like maybe some wrapping paper, just all kinds of random decorative papers. So I like to have my pile just kind of spread out. And uh, if you've got really large um, pieces of paper, you might want to cut them down. Uh, or excuse me, just rip them. We're not even going to use scissors because we're not going to take the time uh, to worry about using scissors. So I would just go ahead and get your pieces, maybe a little bit smaller if you've got really big ones right now. And uh, while we go ahead and do this. So what? So if you get your pencil and your paper ready, what we're going to do is I like to just draw out and not even using a ruler or anything. I just want to um, 
on here, maybe I'm just going to do four and I'll just kind of do some pencil marks. And I usually kind of go over it and get kind of really sketchy with it. You're going to cover these over pretty much anyway, but to me, when I do it sketchy like that, then it doesn't look like it's so, you know, misshapen or something. So go ahead and we just want to put four on a page. We're going to see if we can get through four today. And actually the fourth one I'm hoping that we're going to so save your little um, scrap pieces as you're working because the uh, fourth one I'm hoping that we can do a little one using uh, some scrap papers. Because as you're gluing these down you're just kind of using these as guidelines, you can go outside of them, you can cover them over if you don't meet it that's okay however you want to fill those sections. Okay. Okay, so I just wanna make sure everybody's okay with that so far. And then I'm gonna just do a little demonstration and kind of show you how I get started because I got my phone here. I'm gonna set my timer, but you know, not for this one, but when we get going, I will just make sure I didn't forget to tell you anything. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go back to this page just so I can show you. I'm going to work on one of them on this page here and do a little demo. Okay, this one right here I'm going to work on. So I would have my glue stick ready and want to have, um, I've just got some scrap paper here because this is what I'm going to glue on so I don't get my table all covered with glue. And then I'm just going to start randomly going through these pieces of paper and just picking things up as I go. So I'm going to say I'm pretending I hit the button now. So the timer is going. And I'm just going to pick pieces and just put glue on them. And I'm just going to keep going. I'm not too, thinking really too much about what I'm picking up. I'm just going to whatever I get attracted to right then and there, what my eye finds that I might want to use. And then I would just keep going until I had all of that filled in. You can layer, like if you've got some other maybe papers like this that have that are a little bit transparent, you know, you can layer on top. Just keep going either until you feel like it's done or the timer goes off. And when the timer goes off, if you're in the midst, you've just picked up a piece and you're getting ready to glue, it's okay to go ahead and finish that one piece. Just don't um, try not to add anything new because um, at the end, you want to leave that one finished, but much later on, once they're all done, of course, you can go back, you can, you can look at it with different eyes and maybe decide, well, gee, I want to add something here, I don't like that, I might want to rip that up, or you, know, you can make other decisions uh, a little bit after, but for the exercise part of it, you want to limit your time. Okay, so let's see here. So is everybody ready? I'm good. If I, if I set the timer, go ahead and uh, let me know if there's any issues right now. Um, otherwise, I'm going to look at the timer. I've got it set for for two and a half minutes. And everybody's ready to start. So all right, ready, set, go. Here's the first two and a half minutes. So make your choices and glue away. And I'm just going to be quiet while I'm doing this for the two and a half minutes because it does take some concentration and I don't want to uh, disturb you while you're working on it.
just letting you know there's about a minute left. I'm only telling you that on the first one. I'll, I won't do that on the next ones. Okay, that means time is up. So go ahead and put your last piece down if you've got something in your hand. I guess as they say in uh, like Top Chef, so hands up, utensils down, you're finished. <laughs> Time's up. Okay. So does anybody have any questions? How did that go for everybody? Anybody want to make any comments or? It was fun. I had a great time. I was really Good. surprised though when you said there was a minute left. I was like, whoa, it went by quick. Yeah, oh, it does. Yeah. But I think as you do more and more, it will feel like you've got, um, you know, more time somehow. It, it gets a little bit less stressful as far as thinking about the time. And I think I, I mentioned before that you might end up with, you know, you, you'll be done and you'll say, oh, I've still got 15 seconds left. So, you know. Then you can you can see how that uh, it gets a little bit easier. So I do. I think it's really fun to do these types of collages where you're not really thinking about um, composition and just too much of anything. You just like putting your pieces down, and it's surprising uh, how often they will come out just you know super interesting just by doing that. Because I guess you're following your you know intuitive mode a little bit more. So I would like to go ahead and do a second one. Um, just like that, I'm not going to, I'll just let the whole two and a half minutes go. I won't say anything until you know, we'll hear the timer goes off. And usually by the time, if I'm going to sit and do a group of these, uh, by the time I get to about the third one, I might feel like um, I need to refresh my papers, maybe add something more, or really, um, or you might want to just maybe kind of shuffle your papers around a little bit more so that you when you look when you're looking quickly you might see something different uh something else might be on top that you didn't use before so i find i find that helpful just to kind of keep the papers uh fresh for grabbing to to use for that so all right so i'm going to get another piece of paper to glue on and i'm going to turn the camera around and i'll show you the clock when we get Ready to go. All right, so I've got two and a half minutes. Ready, set, go.
Okay, time is up. Did it still feel super fast or did it feel like it, it got a little bit longer? It's a bit less fast. Yeah, but still yeah. quite fast. <laughs> it's, yeah, it is. It is really I when I'm doing my regular like my Monday morning collages or just my regular work, I don't work this fast. But I find I will go back to this and, and do this exercise as a warm up before I get going on my regular work or if for some reason I just seem to be getting to that point where I, I'm just taking too long to make decisions and I'm feeling unsure about stuff and maybe I have too many supplies out or whatever's not working it's like all right it's time to kind of break that and stop and do something like this and it just kind of gets me right out of that mindset and I uh, can uh, get back to work. So I was mentioning that I've got some of these uh, little uh, just little cutouts little frames and I'll show you I like to use them. And I've got different sizes because maybe that's like it's probably a little bit too big for that one so I've got one that's two and a half by two and a half and just you know look how how nice it can be when you just you can move it around and get the best part and so it might be a background that you want to add something else to or it might be okay just like that but I think putting this around there really kind of helps finish it off so you can see that piece without being too distracted by what might be just right around it and like this little piece over here like this one i'm not as thrilled about um, but i you know i can always go back and put things on top of it or rip, rip stuff off and i did want to show you one let's see because if you if you do feel like oh i got i got caught in the time and i didn't quite finish this is one that i did not too long ago uh, it was a two and a half minute one and i i did i ended up running out of time and i have this little spot in here where I didn't put anything down and not that that's bad, but I just felt like it, it needs something in there. So, you know, I have finished it and everything so I could just go back whenever I want and just decide, you know, maybe I want to stick another little piece like that in there or I've got a couple of um, stamps that are kind of on the purple side, maybe like this one here I kind of and I left this little piece of um, mulberry paper here when I glued it down I purposely left like a little pocket so that if I wanted to be able to stick something under there I could so that's something you might want to keep in mind too when you're putting papers around especially if you're putting them around the outside edge because um, if you you might want to tuck something underneath it and uh, it works because you, know, you can always push it back down or add a little bit more glue so something like that would you know and then glue that down I have to move it over to really think cover that spot. So, you know, I can add to that and feel like it's a little bit more done that way. And then also I've got one here I wanted to show you my blue ones. Yeah, these here. When I, I did these, I, I liked all of these. I had, um, I can go back and put my little, let's where that other one go. I really lost my frames. Well, anyway, I can put my frames on here to kind of move them around and see what sections I like. But when I got to this one, I was not happy with this big piece that I had just plopped here in the middle and with its white cut edge. It's like too much right dab in the middle there. So I decided I have this other little piece of blue here that I thought I might be able to save it and make it something more I like by maybe putting it over here on this edge or covering that up just a little bit. But again, I didn't want to put anything too like right in the middle. So I would just play with that and see what's going to make me feel like that. Um, I've kind of solved that because sometimes you you may feel like, okay, I've got a little bit. It's of a okay, Miss Mikey. On this Good one. girl. Good girl. Okay, so just um, ideas for if you run out of time and you've got some extra space still, you can go back and do it. Or if there's something that ends up and it's like, I just don't like that. And two, if I, if I didn't feel like I could um, solve this, I would just go ahead and really just, you know, rip it up. You, you know, you can do that or take some sandpaper to it and uh, rough it up and then glue something else down that'll, that you'll like more. Okay. 
All right, so let's do one more at two and a half, or excuse me, at three, yeah, two and a half minutes. Am I doing two and a half? I said these were gonna be three minute collages. Oh dear, I just forgot all about that. <laughs> I, I had my timer set on two and a half because that's what I was doing. <laughs> So I, I stole 30 seconds from you guys. I'm sorry. But it seems like everybody's doing okay with that. So that's really stretching you if you're doing them at two and a half and you're doing okay. So, all right. So one more, I just need to get another piece of paper here to glue on. And then the fourth one, we'll try to take um, some of our smaller little uh, bits. And maybe I'll even draw a smaller square before I uh, go to work. Cause I, you know, some of the, little pieces that I've got here, I might keep those for the, the fourth one that we do. Okay. All right. So here we go. We're going to get ready for our third one at two and a half and ready, set, go. Okay, there's our time again. Okay, that was three. You guys are pros now at two and a half minutes. <laughs> All right. So any questions or comments so far? If you, if you have um, straight edges sometimes, mm -hmm. is it all right to have straight edges? Oh, sure. Yeah, that's fine. Oh. Um, you know, it just depends. It'll just, whether you're using ripped edges or straight edges, it'll, it'll just affect the look a little bit. I think mine are a combination. Uh, I think I do have probably more torn edges just because I'm taking the papers and ripping them as I go. Yeah. Uh, you know, but it's perfectly fine to do that. I, I do tend to like if I have an edge and I've got this edge here, I do tend to put that on the outside, you know, where the pencil mm. line is for whatever reason. I'm just drawn to, to doing that. But no, there's no right no, or wrong. No. You can put them straight edges right. anywhere, you know. Okay. Um, you Thank know, you. and I 
found is that if I take the glue stick and you have the same one I do. Uh -huh, the UHU? Yes. I find that if I cover the whole area that I'm going to glue, Mm -hmm. I don't have to have sticky fingers all over and then it tends and if you work with little pieces, it tends to stick to your hands and it won't lay down because you, you know, you've got sticky, you know what I'm saying? Yes, so, that's a great idea. That's a really good tip because I have done that a couple of times where I've got just a tiny little piece that I want to put on. Um, that's maybe something you want to try on this this last one. You can actually put the glue on your paper and work on that. Um, Maybe not so much with larger pieces if you're using it, but definitely for any of the smaller ones when or you know because I do I have my fingers are really sticky right now from uh, you know but yes. okay so but yeah that's a great tip thank you. Um, so maybe if you can um, let's see I think i'm going to. Oh, I think i'll just make this a smaller right within this one square rather than having this one the same size i'm just going to kind of make this a little bit smaller here i'm not even going to bother erasing that outside but i'm going to work within this section right here and i'm going to just try to put more of my little pieces that i might have from working on the other ones you know and if they're if they end up not being enough to fill your page, then of course feel free to go in and get, whoops, I just dropped my glue stick. You know, feel free to go in and grab whatever papers you do need, but it's kind of fun sometimes to, uh, I've been doing that on my Monday morning collages. If I start out with bigger pieces of paper and I finish and I still have some left, I will keep going and make another collage, limiting it just to the pieces that I had left over and uh, it's been interesting because a couple of times I really didn't have much to work with so it really pushed me to um, experiment and just kind of um, you know use just those pieces so it can be kind of kind of fun to see what you can come up with all right so okay so we're going to do a smaller one um, I'm just debating should I leave it at two and a half or do you want to go to two Anybody want to try for two or should we stay where we are? Two and a half. Two and a half. Okay. So this should make you feel like you've got a lot more time. If you're working in a smaller space, um, I think you'll see a, a difference. Because I know when I'm working, when I used to work on these large ones, these four by fours, um, I started with these and it was a little bit intimidating and overwhelming um, to, you know, for the short amount of time that I had. I found it was easier to work on the little ones to start. So that's kind of why I chose the two to two and a half inch squares um, to do for today in case, uh, you know, because I didn't know if anybody has done these before or not. So, all right, so I've kind of got my little pieces, my little scraps here, and I'm going to get the timer on again. All right, so we're gonna work smaller, but we're still gonna give ourselves two and a half minutes, okay? I'll turn my camera around here. Okay, so ready, set, and go.
Okay, time is up. Okay, so how did that one go for everybody? Did anybody end up with time left over? Yeah, I did too. I thought maybe you would with uh, having worked slightly bigger. I almost forgot too. I started working in the in that outside edge where I had uh, marked off that I wasn't going to work in. So, but yeah, I did end up with a little bit. So hopefully you enjoyed that, and um, I hope it. If you've never done them before, I hope you'll keep working at it and see that it it really does get easier as you do them, and. Uh, Hopefully, um, you know, it, I just hope it inspires you to keep doing more with that because I think it's uh, it's just it's a fun exercise, but it also can lead to other things that you might discover and want to work on. So I uh, just wanted to let you know. Uh, that this exercise that we did here, these speed collages, this is what I plan on doing in my uh, the sketchbook collage workshop that I have coming up in June, that will be like the warm up exercise that we'll be doing at the beginning of the class to kind of get us going. Um, but other than that, we'll be working with uh, lots of different uh, papers and I'll be giving you prompts for different paper choices and we'll be discussing uh, composition, layering, adding texture. So it's, it's a really good class uh, for beginners, but also anybody who just wants to uh, play in a sketchbook because we'll be working uh, in a sketchbook. I'm thinking probably like eight by 10 is gonna be a good size. And I, I'm gonna keep it all to using a glue stick and, until maybe the last class we might get into using um, some of the liquid medium. But really, I, I do almost everything I do in my sketchbooks. I, I don't use the liquid medium. I'm just using everything. Um, I even have some techniques that I'll share for using very lightweight papers, how you can uh, get those down with the glue stick without ruining them or ripping them. So. Uh, so the dates for that, um, that's going to be a four week class and that's going to be four consecutive Tuesdays in June. Um, I'll have more information on my website and registration is going to open May 20th for that one. So um, if you wanted to get on my uh, my email list, I'm going to see if I can put my uh, sign up in the chat there for you. There we go. So that's in the chat if you wanted to, or you can just go to my website and you'll see where you can sign up for that. So um, I'm going to 